Open weight and open source AI is going massive. I'm gonna tell you what that means for you and some of the trends that I'm keeping an eye on that I think will define the next wave of what's to come in AI that you can run locally. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably see this and think to yourself, hey, you're missing the radiator and you've got a couple extra GPUs in there. And I do. And one of the reasons that I'm making this video is that I wanted to talk about the challenges that are going to present themselves more and more frequently as you want to run closer and closer to frontier edge models. And I think there's some huge implications that in the next couple of months will be coming down the pipeline. Certainly these are challenging times though for system RAM. And that's going to also translate into GPU RAM. So this is one of the things that I definitely wanna get the message out about quickly. If you are looking at GPUs, there is a very, very strong chance that they're going to go up in price if you're looking at new. That will in turn put pressure on used. We saw some nice reprise down into the normal ranges recently with 3090s hitting about $700, still for 24 gigabytes. My best bet and I think the best recommendation out there in that price bracket, if you can find it at that price bracket, which check the links below if you're interested in that. But we see models going massive, almost up to a year now. We've been seeing this. Really, DeepSeek started something. These are trends that we're going to see continuing as you push closer and closer to frontier level. This also has a degrading impact on, unfortunately, tokens per second for generation and also for prompt processing. This is interesting, and this presents a lot of challenges if you are running locally. You're looking at using tons of additional resources also to get there. And I am eagerly awaiting and I have it on good authority that it'll probably be pretty darn soon, GLM 4.6 Air. I think that's going to be my next go-to model for running. Certainly 4.5 Air was in the approachable class with a system with a lot of RAM and a lot of GPUs. So I do expect them to hopefully be able to target that. It's something I've noticed, some of the companies out there releasing some of the best products, some of the most avant-garde, pushing the edge stuff, are not really interested in releasing an intermediary smaller one. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that actually becomes quite difficult, especially video generation. It's almost impossible to run most of the Wanyan models out there. That is unfortunate because those are some of the best, most compelling, most interesting open source video generation, game generation, world generation models that exist. And the ability to run those is pretty much tied to, do you have an 80 gigabyte like H100 or something laying around? That's an insane class difference in where your GPUs are. When you're looking at video and image generation, having everything running on one GPU is going to definitely be the ideal way to do that because you're gonna get the best system bandwidth. And if you ever have to communicate with the PCIe bus, you're definitely gonna take a massive impact. So there are a lot of challenges with running some of those locally. Seeing what we got from OpenAI with GPT OSS was pretty awesome. I feel like it was the result of a fairly massive pressure campaign that happened from the public towards Sam Altman on X that really kind of spurred a lot of that. But I also, at the same time, think there's a shift in dynamics of where some of the hype has been around the closed models, especially Anthropic, OpenAI, uh, Grok also. They have really, really talked a lot about things that are gonna be hard to deliver. And of course, Garage AGI. We're building Garage AGI here, right? I mean, AGI in general is one of the things that I've been incredibly, it's probably not gonna happen right away. And especially if you hear people talking about AGI, you should maybe raise a little bit of sus flag on that. I think it is very behooving to anybody to also at the same time, consider that we are still dealing with amazingly capable tool sets that bring amazing capabilities that you didn't have in the past and definitely can speed up workflows, definitely can improve your life. I mean, insanely improve your life and definitely have tons of value even without being AGI. The number of steps that we're gonna take to get to AGI is gonna be pretty big but I'm not actually thinking that it's gonna happen really soon. There's been some over-promising on the pathway and how long it'll take to get to AGI, and I anticipate that that could cause some problems for some of them. Does that mean that they would pull back from releasing open-weighted and open-source models? Yes, probably in my opinion, they could. Definitely a lot of competition internationally, and the ability of the Chinese to actually leapfrog in a lot of regards, just by looking and releasing off of each other's models has been pretty impressive. And we see the advancement, of course, with the geopolitical implications of the importance of Taiwan and everything else just growing more and more salient today. 
So it is a time that is very difficult to predict what exactly the next trend is. But I do want to just go ahead and drop my predictions. Predictions, so don't hold me to it. I think we're gonna see larger and larger open source releases. One trillion parameters does seem to be the new trend out there. Quite difficult, definitely to have to use quantization usually to run that effectively in a local setting. And there can be some trade-offs with that. Even highly quantized, you're still looking at mid 200s for most of those to actually be even runnable at the lowest quant sizes. So also definitely demand and resource intensive as well. Especially compound that with the rising cost of system RAM and also probably VRAM. And you got yourself a perfect storm for shortages. And I am definitely expecting it to get worse over at least the next couple of quarters. I think maybe by half two of 2026, we could see some lightning of that. This definitely has something to do though with the perception of where the course of AI in general and AGI is. If we come back to reality gradually and accept that AGI probably is not happening tomorrow, then I think we could see a lightening up of some of the competition. Definitely potentials for there to be major catastrophic changes and demand, especially for data centers. So there could be some very, very headwater moments that happen with open source, especially as a result of what's happening with closed source. I'm anticipating that there will be at least a couple of major events in probably the next just couple months here, probably before the year's end or right after the year's end, we could see some major events around AI. And in particular, I don't think it's going to be AGI is realized. I think it could be there is economics that come to bear. So scaling alone, I very much do not expect to get us all the way there. I think if we look at the human brain and kind of draw some similarities between what might be a pathway to an AGI system, we will definitely need to have refined, better methods that certainly do not just require more data alone. Certainly the techniques will improve. We've seen some massive improvement with different technologies and Certainly, some of these do make it easier as well for you if you are running local AI. Things like MOE and sparsity in the models make things approachable on systems that are running DDR5. And I do definitely think there is a lot of potential in lower power inference being accessible to more and more people. I think that is gonna be a side effect of some of what we're seeing as the trends continue in this specific pathway that we are on right now with LLMs and hopefully diverge into a even lower wattage utilization in the future. So what are some of the actionable things that you could do today if you were looking to get into local AI yourself? Definitely, if you don't have GPUs, you should probably consider whether or not you can get your hands on them. And that's not me saying you should definitely go out and buy GPUs at any cost. I do not agree with that. There are several people out there that suggest that, but I don't agree with that at all. I think you definitely need to keep your budget in mind in anything you do, especially in economic times that are fairly uncertain. And where we're at today on GPUs, the MSRP having been hit, and in some regards on some of the more recent cards like the 5070 Ti, which is only a 16 gigabyte card, we do see that they are a little bit lower than MSRP. However, you do not see the 5060 Ti, a 16 gigabyte card, also just lower performance below MSRP. The cheapest cards that have high VRAM are probably gonna be in significant demand. So while some of the mid-range cards may come down in price a little bit, they still are, in my opinion, not as attractive as getting a couple of the lower end cards. I also have to say we've got a bit of uncertainty about what happens with the Super Series, and that is as a result of the DRAM crisis that is an ongoing thing right now. So your Super Series, which we had been kind of, I think a lot of people counting on for 24 gigabyte, 50, 70 TIs that were gonna be the Super Series, 24 gigabyte, awesome GPUs. I was definitely myself thinking of getting a pile of them. Those may not end up happening. And that was unfortunate. It may be delayed. It may not happen at all. It's very much up in the air what's gonna happen there. It may actually happen. I mean, I would be surprised, but eh, wilder things could happen out there. I don't expect that one to happen. But definitely the Super Series is not where I'm betting my cards at the moment. And I think people will come around to that realization. And as they do, they probably snatch up things that are, again, like the 5060 Ti. And avoiding the mid-range cards like the 70s and 80s is typically not a bad idea. On the AMD front, we've got 
Things that are pretty cool, we definitely checked out the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte, a fairly decent performer, especially for text-based LLMs. So something to consider there also. Now the difference between Nvidia and AMD, you're gonna get about everything under the hood and it's just gonna work really easy with Nvidia. AMD may take some extra steps and some extra tinkering to get there. Some things may not perform quite as well like video generation. There is Intel also with the B50, and while it's priced not as attractive as I would like to see it at, the SRIOV may make it, if you are looking for a single GPU, a decent consideration. The B60, I don't think those are gonna be available in any substantial quantities, which makes that mm, depressing. Intel always does this. I knew they were gonna do it again here. They put Pro on something and then they don't produce enough, and it's like, it could be actually a really great GPU, but good luck getting your hands on it. And like I mentioned earlier on the GPU front, the 3090s in the 7 to 750 range at 24 gigabytes still seem like a pretty decent consideration, especially if you can get them lower than that, a very decent consideration. And so on to system RAM. System RAM, of course, under a lot of pressure recently, I would also suggest that you can actually do inference. A lot of people don't try this out, but you should definitely download GPT OSS 20B and just run it with CPU inference on what you have. You can probably just install a Llama and give it a try out in about five to 10 minutes. And if you have a GPU, great. If you don't have a GPU, you might still be okay. And you can get pretty decent tokens per second on the 20B. And if you're looking at the larger models, definitely running CPU inference gets pretty painful if you don't have system bandwidth. And DDR4, not cheap right now. DDR5, pretty stupidly expensive also. Those things, when I was recommending them a year ago, if you snatch those up, well, congrats. You got yourself some gold there. If you're looking to scale into something more modern, definitely you can consider that you have really good options like I covered with the B650 and there's a B550 video which you can actually cram even more GPUs onto and that's because it's got five PCIe full width slots and it doesn't matter for inference if you're on PCI3 even if you are at X1 speed. It does for image generation and for video generation for inference, not that big of a deal at all. So I definitely think you could consider that if you're looking for building something for inference and scaling, definitely, I think you probably wanna look at some older GPUs. I think these are exciting topics and I am excited to look at where we have come so far, so fast. The scale of where we were a year ago and where we are today is dramatically different. The usefulness, the utility you can extract out of it is dramatically different from where we were then and where we are today because the quality of the outputs is simply significantly better. And there is much more tooling and the tooling is substantially refined. We probably see a lot more of that. And definitely we had a very good amount of money pumped into all of this ecosystem. Does that continue? Big questions, big expectations. And will we be able to have those results delivered? Fascinating time to be involved in this topic. Of course, you can follow along with the guides that this channel's produced, where I take you through the steps to run Olama, VLLM, and Llama C++. Llama C++ really turning into a shining star. They have a new interface, and it's pretty darn good also. Everybody have a great one, and I will check you out next time.